Welcome to the Roanoke Real Estate Podcast with your host and realtor, the Fraser Hughes Experience, and do not forget to Hughes it or lose it. And you're definitely going to want to Hughes it. Hi, this is the Fraser Hughes Experience Realtor, and welcome to the only Roanoke Real Estate Podcast, where we are talking real estate from the star city of Roanoke, Virginia, and beyond. And that's exactly what I cover when it comes to selling your property and helping you find property as a licensed realtor in the state of Virginia. I look forward to serving you. And thanks for being a part of the podcast and listening today. I want to say hi to uh, Mike out there in Roanoke. Um, and, and thank you for listening. I know that you had mentioned earlier today that. Um, uh, when I saw you, that you really love the podcast. And also, I want to give a shout out to uh, Roanoke's top electrician and handyman, Mark Older of Harmony Electric, um, who has been doing a lot of work for us here recently. And um, also, another listener, as we give more shout outs, this is Sasha Haynes, licensed optician at BJ's. She loves listening to the uh, Roanoke Real Estate Podcast. And then also, Andrew Bailey of Star City Garage Doors. If you've got a garage door that needs to be fixed, um, this guy is the man, Andrew Bailey. So reach out to me if you have any need when it comes to working on your home here in the Roanoke area or, or anything else, I can really help you. So um, connect with me on social media, the Fraser Hughes Experience um, on Facebook and Hughes or Lou's on Instagram and um, my brand new website unveiled this week. Um, it's Roanoke Area Listings. And why do I call it Roanoke Area Listings? Because I can help you with any home in the Roanoke area when it comes to selling and finding your home. In fact, um, we've got a a handful of contracts underway right now, and I want to thank you so much for your referrals. Um, It means so much. And uh, don't forget to check out my latest property listed in historical downtown Roanoke, Old Southwest, Roanoke, 416 Day Avenue. You keep the character and charm of the outside of the home, but the interior has been completely remodeled. And then, hey, do you want some lakefront property? Do you want to live on the lake? Have a boat dock? Well, I've got one of the most inexpensive pieces of land at the lake, only 20 minutes from Roanoke, Virginia, Lot 9, Point Drive. And also, my latest listings will be taking place here in the next few weeks in Salem, Grandin, and Roanoke County, in in North County to be exact. So, you know, I like to always start off the show with something positive. And what do I do? Well, since I'm a Dale Carnegie graduate, I like to go ahead and reach into the archives of Dale Carnegie. I'm actually a graduate of the course and sold for Dale Carnegie. I think it's really important when it comes to having good communication skills. And I'm seeing a lot of people out there that don't even know how to communicate via email with a thank you or or smiling or being genuinely nice. But that's exactly what Dale Carnegie teaches. Um, And what I like to do is just randomly go into the book of Dale Carnegie's scrapbook, into his scrapbook and... um, just pull out something random and then share my experience and and let you relate to it. So uh, let's see here. This is from the writings of Dale Carnegie. It says, today is life, the only life you are sure of. Make the most of today. Get interested in something. Shake yourself awake. Develop a hobby. Let the winds of enthusiasm sweep through you. Live today with gusto. And live today with gusto is so important. Isn't it important to have some gusto in your life? You know, um, I I can relate to the fact that there are many people out there um, in today's uh, world that do not have much gusto. Um, You know, they struggle, they complain, and the more negativity you breathe and speak, the more it comes into your life. Did you know, and this is according to Russell Wilson's mind trainer, okay, Trevor McLeod, he says that if you speak something out loud negatively, then it's 83 percent more powerful and that most people's illnesses are caused by speaking about them. Oh, my my poor heart. I think you get the gist. And then having a, a hobby, something that you do, something that you enjoy. And, and maybe it maybe it's bikes. Yeah, maybe it's riding a bike. And that is our guest on the Roanoke Real Estate Podcast today. So if you want to be on the show, don't forget, it's not too hard. Just look me up. I'm easy to find. Hughes or Lose Instagram, the Fraser Hughes Experience on Facebook. Um, on the show today, a very special guest, and um, I stepped into the bike shop to record um, this podcast um, with Steve and Bruce, um, and, I, and I hope I pronounce his name correctly. You're going to hear it correctly <laughs> during the podcast. It's a very unique name, but he owns Downshift Coffee, Bikes, and Beer, 
And the big question is, why in the world would you have somebody that owns a bike shop on your podcast? How does that relate to houses? Well, we're going to discuss today his move to Roanoke, why he chose the Star City to open up this very unique bike shop, which there, there's nothing else like it in the city. It's called Downshift Coffee, Bikes, and Beer. His, his beans are locally um, locally. Um, uh, manufactured here in Roanoke, locally roasted, manufactured. <laughs> it sounds like something synthetic, but he, the, the beans are from Roanoke. Uh, the beer is local and then the bikes are too. And this is not your ordinary bike shop in downtown Roanoke because it's got, it's got like three parts to it. You've got a huge, massive deck where you can go and hang out and see the star. And then you've got beer, and then you've got awesome coffee, and then you've got the showroom, which has all the bikes, which is really cool. And then he's got what's called the pit. And that's a whole separate place where he goes to um, work on work on bikes. And he actually moved here from Alaska. And you know, during the interview, I asked him, like, how in the world did you end up in Roanoke from Alaska? I mean, how many people did you meet here in the city that are actually from from uh from alaska and why in the world would you open up a bike shop with beer and coffee and we're, we're going to find out about this plus they've got tacos they've got tons of delicious food you can walk in there order the food sit on the deck and have complete privacy i told him i just wanted to lay out lay out on the deck i mean he is such a neat guy but how did i meet steve how did i come across steve well when covid took place the cycle class at my gym went away because all the gyms closed. Now they're open back up right now, right? But my bike had been sitting in the basement because all I've been doing is taking cycle and exercising. And I was like, man, I want to get back out on the road. How can I do this? How can I do this? Well, I started Googling bike shops that were open that would work on bikes. And Steve offered to do this. And not only did Steve offer to come um, pick up my bike, with he's got this huge van where he will come and pick up your bike at your house. How cool is that? Who else does that? Nobody. He offered to come pick up my bike and work on it and tune it up, give me new tires. And you know what? I price shopped him because that's what I do because I'm a salesman. <laughs> I'm going to price shop you. Work If it's contact lenses, if it's a water bottle, or if it's my bikes and a bike, um, he, he, he came in at a really great price and took really good care of me and picked up the bike and then brought it back and I was on the road again. So I was, and he's really nice. He's got awesome energy. So right now, as this podcast, I want to set the scene. I've taken my microphone and I'm, I'm sitting down with him on the deck outside overlooking you where you can see the star overlooking downtown Roanoke in this amazing bike shop roof deck. And I'm interviewing him underneath a umbrella, and it's about 90 degrees. So here we go. I'm hanging out here today. I have stepped into the shop. I am downtown now, uh, downtown Roanoke, one of my favorite spots. I just love downtown Roanoke. I love um, everything it has to offer, the restaurants, the people, the energy, especially downshift bicycles. And I'm here with Steve Ambrose, uh, who opened up this shop. And I would pass it and I would think, beer and coffee and bikes? Hey, that seems like a good idea. They're, they're right across the street from Angel of Assisi's. And um, I decided, hey, I want to interview this guy and incorporate it into real estate. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. So, th Steve, you have an interesting story. You moved here. Um, you, you moved here. We're going to talk about your, your home buying experience and, um, and talk about your, your bikes. Yeah. Okay. And, and I love riding my bicycle. I'm so thankful for it. Um, so anyways, I'm going to move the microphone over here for us. So Steve, you, uh, you, how did you get here to Roanoke? Where did oh, you man. come from? Well, good question. So we, the short answer is Anchorage, Alaska, Dillingham, Alaska, South, Southwest Alaska, the long answer. <laughs> all right. All right. So Alaska, is that where it's like daylight for three hours and dark the rest of the day? In the winter. Yeah. And then the summer it's backwards. So in the so summer how does that it's, work? it's, it's hard to deal with in the winter time. Yeah. It can be, you know, up to 20 hours of darkness some days, um, depending on where you are in the state. There's a lot of difference between the South and the North, but some parts of it are completely dark all, you know, all winter. And then you have the inverse of that in the summer. It's daylight all day. So you, so it's daylight. The sun may come up at six, six, and not go down till 
12, p 12 midnight? It's even worse than that. It's like the sun will come up at 2 a.m. and go down at midnight, and that's your only gap is that those two hours between midnight and 2 a.m. Yeah, I've heard there's a lot of alcoholics there. <laughs> yeah. So are people yeah. crazy up there or They what? can get that way. I mean, that's part of the reason why we laugh or left. You know, the um, it can be really taxing mentally to deal with that. And, yeah, I mean, alcoholism, domestic violence, there's tons, tons and tons of problems. Uh, I'll be at a beautiful place to be in terms of scenery um, and natural resources. The, the life up there is not easy, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I can't imagine because, yeah, that's that sounds crazy. So how did you end up in Alaska and how did you end up in Rona yeah. with a bike shop? Yeah, and crazy. Um, well, I left the lower 48 in 2006 um, to go adventuring with an ex of mine and we moved to Canada and then we moved south to Alaska, believe that or not. And then from Alaska, I met my current partner um, and we decided we wanted to get out of the north and we wanted to be a little closer to family. We knew children were kind of in our future and so both of our parents live on the east coast. And you have um, a baby, right? We do, yeah. How old? Brooks was born 12 weeks ago, so okay. that's exciting. Is he gonna ride on the on, next to you on a I bike? Hope so. I hope so. I have a family bike downstairs I can show you that will fit him in the front right now in his little infant seat. So oh, cool. cool, awesome, all right. <laughs> um, but we ended up kind of picking the east coast uh, and then we, we zeroed in on Virginia and then we interviewed a bunch of different cities. We, you know, we looked at Charlottesville and Virginia Beach and DC um, and Roanoke. And Roanoke really was a great spot for us uh, because of the sort of commitment to the outdoors and the people and the cost of living. And it just it checked all the right boxes. Did you know you wanted to open up a bike shop? Yeah, so that was part of the mission was to find a place that could support a bike shop, you know, that was a cafe and beer bar as well. So we had the idea and the business plan for Downshift going into this move. Um, and we decided on Roanoke because we knew uh, just by interviewing the people and the businesses here what their experience was like and that it was a great place to end up. Yeah, and, and you know how I met Steve was that my, dur during the COVID thing, my, my bike sitting in the basement, I was taking cycle class, the gym closes, and I'm like, I want to ride my bike. I miss it. And you picked it up at the house in the downshift truck. Yeah. The, yeah, you're, with your carrier service. That is a really kick-ass uh, <laughs> van, by the way. And um, you picked it up, serviced it, and brought it back, which is, that is like five-star customer yeah, service. That's awesome. Yep. And I really appreciate that. So it's good. I'm riding my bike again. And did you, yeah. so you knew you were going to open up a bike shop. And how long have you been riding bikes? Oh I mean, my gosh. You, your whole life? Or? Yeah, I mean, since, I mean, I remember having my first, you know, bike without training wheels at like age five, right? It was a Huffy single speed and I'd used that for five years and then graduated to a Trek 800, which was like a, an old school rigid mountain bike. And then from there I got my first like real mountain bike when I was in grad school. And grad school is really where I got into cycling. So like 2003, um, I started commuting and riding every day really saw the benefits of not having a vehicle and not you being dependent on a vehicle for travel um and then just, so did you have a car i did have a car uh, yeah I, unfortunately just with my lifestyle and like being a field biologist and stuff it just was really hard to not have a vehicle i would love to live a vehicle free life and maybe i'll get there at one point yeah one point in time, it's kind of hard if like your parents live in lynchburg i guess you could take a i don't know i wouldn't want to pay um you know uber to go to yeah, lynchburg yeah there's lots it's hard it's really difficult to be car free and i really uh, it's really impressive to people that can do that but especially with family and family in the region it's just it's really difficult yeah um, if you got to take kids to school i mean yep. it's not like you can just put them all in the side carriage of a bike yeah yeah i mean they do make family bikes but it's still it's just it's hard it's a challenge that, yeah. that you know infrastructure wise and timing and you know you don't have two hours to commute by bike everywhere all the time yeah so, let me set the scene for you here at downshift you walk in the door and there's a coffee bar on the left and a bunch of really cool bikes. And then they've got a rooftop here that we're sitting on that's gorgeous. You can see the, the star here from where we're sitting. And then you also have, um, what's it, what do you all call it? The other, the pit? Yeah, so the pit is where our service takes place. Yeah, yeah which is on 4th Street. Makes me think of Metallica getting yeah. in, the, in the mosh pit. <laughs> okay, all right, so let's continue the story. Yeah. So you end up, you pick Roanoke, you, um, Let's talk about your your home buying experience. Yes, yeah, totally. All right, so, so how yeah. did you pick where to live in Roanoke and well, your realtor? Good question. So we had a, um, I met the our, our landlord for our commercial property here. Um, we met him just kind of randomly through the internet. He had some listing, commercial listings posted and we inquired about them for downshift. And um, we said, hey, you know, we're, we're obviously gonna be moving here. Can you help us on the, the sort of residential side? And he said, sure. 
Um, and so he drove us around Roanoke. And I know... Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And we didn't... Really, what was cool about the experience was we didn't know anything about the city. And so we used his sort of experience living here to show us like different neighborhoods and talk to us about where, you know, different parts that had amenities we were looking for, like parks and access to the Greenway. Um, and so, yeah, Aaron did a really great job sort of driving us around and saying, let's go look at this house. Let's go look at this house. Um, we didn't really have a, uh, a sort of hard and fast rule of, you know, three bedroom, you know, blah, 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 like, like a lot of people do have. Um, and so we looked at a lot of stuff. We looked at things in Raleigh Court. We looked at stuff in Northwest. We looked at stuff in Northeast. We looked at stuff in Southeast. We looked at stuff in um, Bocina. And um, we eventually landed in the Morningside neighborhood. So just um, between like 9th and 13th up by Jackson Park. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's an interesting area. In fact, I sold a house up there and I hold the record for the, um, the house that has sold the most up there. And I had no idea it was gonna happen. <laughs> a nurse had remodeled it. It has an electric gate yeah. in the back no to kidding. go in. Wow. Yeah, it, it, you'd have to check it out, it's yeah. on Murray. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's a neat neighborhood. And so your realtor, when you first came in, so he, dro he drove you around the neighborhoods and then you found a realtor. Yep, yep. Gotcha. Yep. And so, um, yeah, and so we ended up, uh, we, it was a four sub by owner, so it was not your typical transaction. Um, the owner lived in Lynchburg, and what was great about, and this just speaks to Roanoke in general, was that we were able to buy our house with cash because it was so affordable and right. just amazing, and we were super happy. Um, we stayed in it for a little over two years and did you do anything to it we did yeah so we did a not a full remodel but we, we did a bathroom remodel redid the floors you know their original hardwood um, painted the interior we put a nice deck on the back cleaned up the landscaping did you do this while you were living there yes yeah okay yep so we stayed in the house did the remodel while we were there um, really enjoyed the house and we we got pregnant and we said holy smokes we need more room so gotcha now when, so you did the remodeling what was your favorite part that you remodeled on the house was it the deck was it the kitchen? yeah by far the deck um, the deck and the floors the floors just really made the house you I know, know the floors in a house when you walk in um, when they're done redone I mean they just I love them yeah there's something there really is really good energy about it and the ones that aren't redone, you're thinking, hey, man, you, you need a facelift. Yeah. So did it help you um, sell your home and get a little bit more for it? Yeah, absolutely. It? We were very happy with what the, the sort of turnover was on, on what we made on the house. Um, what was that time frame? So you moved in and you we moved. On yeah, we bought in March of 17 and we sold in August of 19. All right, gotcha. And then sold for a decent amount more because yep. of the remodeling. So you yep. got more than what you put into absolutely, it. Absolutely, yeah. Perfect. Yep. Okay, that, that's what I want to hear. So then... Yeah you find a realtor this time because you know there's nothing no such thing as a for sale by yeah. owner realtor and by the way if you have a for sale by owner i can make you more money if you come see me um you wouldn't believe the pictures people take yeah, of no, their houses it's pretty awful <laughs> yeah um plus plus you get more exposure too if you can't see it you can't buy it yep all right so then you find a realtor yeah, right? and there's a great story behind that too he came in yeah. to downshift bought a bicycle from us and got just because we like to connect with our customers got into a conversation Turned out he was a realtor, asked him about it and said, hey, we're in the market for buying a house. Do you, do you want to represent us? And he said, absolutely. And another great experience with that. Okay, gotcha. So did you go, how many houses did you look at? Um, Probably. Or did you have the neighborhood picked out? No. And so we were sort of searching again. So again, we didn't really have a set. Well, we had a pretty strict criterion, which was, which was challenging to find. So we had, what we wanted was separated living because we wanted the grandparents to be able to come and stay comfortably. Ah. So we wanted... Uh, large backyard with a garage and separated living with you know kitchenette bedroom bathroom and that it's sort of hard to find in Rona because you have a lot of older houses where all the bedrooms are upstairs you know and and they either don't have a fenced in yard or they have big fenced in yards and they're out of the city and so it's just difficult to find something like that yeah um so yeah so we ended up you know finding where we are right now did it was, take you a little while it did it actually took us um probably close to six months I mean we were you know we weren't super hot at first but like when baby was you know more imminent oh yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> we were definitely starting to think about it more so did you fix up your house during it now at all or um we really bought it kind of turnkey we the only thing we've done so far is um do some landscaping but the interior we pretty much have left untouched yeah, yeah we, we we had to find an in-law suite because my mother-in-law lives with us yeah and you know so which was new to me yep 
And so she goes and check this out. She puts a kitchen in downstairs. There's no kitchen. So she goes, I'm going to put in a kitchen. I was like, well, go for it because you just increased the value of my home by putting in a fridge, a stove, a sink. And then she puts in one of those uh, chair lifts. Austin, you get up the stairs? Yeah. <laughs> and then the baby gets on that. Yeah. So you have hilarious. to bring yours over when he, <laughs> when he gets older. All right. So you, you move into your home, and, and what a unique neighborhood you're in. Yeah. You know, um, it's, it's, I just I find it so different up yeah. there. And, and the, also, when you come up to the top of the steps, yeah. you know, you have, you have the view right there right. as well. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, seeing the um, – just like – it's cool because you get great views of downtown – you have um you're still in the city limits and so but it doesn't feel like it no it really doesn't i mean the yards are big um the houses are separated you've got privacy um i can still bike commute to work every day i mean shoot i ran i ran to work today like i mean it's just it's it's such a cool spot yeah we're talking the 24015 zip code which is one of my favorites in roanoke and um so you're you you run and you bike Mm -hmm. yep all right gotcha all right so now back back to downshift. What is what is your mission here? Yeah, so our mission is to get more people on to bicycles, and okay. so really what that means for us is using bikes for everyday life, and so not necessarily you know your typical sort of spandex athletic performance ride. Yeah, my wife makes fun of those shorts, <laughs> by the way. Because sometimes when it's hot, I'll just wear the spandex. I only I won't wear a top. I'll, yeah. I like the sun. Yeah, no, I and she's totally like, oh, it. you look like a fruitcake. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, to, to, to avoid that, really, the, what we're trying to sort of push here is to be able to use your bike for everyday stuff. So, like, get on your bike, ride to work, get on your bike, take your kids to school, get on the bike, go to Kroger, get on the bike, you know, go to the coffee shop. Like, just basically replacing your vehicle with t- daily trips with your bicycle. I mean, granted, we support, you know, people who are ath- athletes and the performance side of cycling as well. They're definitely friends of the shop, and we have cycling teams, and we're definitely into that as well. But really, the mission for Downshift and the reason why we're downtown is to get more people to use bikes in place of vehicles. Gotcha. So, um, and, and the neat thing, let's let's talk about that. Hey, go take your bike to Kroger. You make accessories that will hold groceries. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So they have racks that you can put on the bike. I mean, there's trailers. There's dedicated cargo bikes that you can throw hundreds of pounds of stuff in that have electric motors on them and can That's help insane. you pedal. Yep. That's cool. Yep. And it's good for the in the environment yeah. too. Now you have. Uh, I walked in, I saw you have the electric bike. How does that yep. work? There, so right now, most of the legislation in Virginia allows for three different classes of electric bikes. Class one has a pedal assist, so there's no throttle. Class two um, will have a throttle, and class three will not have a throttle, and they all have different sort of speed limits associated with that. The first two are 20 miles an hour, the third one is 28 miles an hour. So you basically get assistance up to 20 or 28 miles an hour from an electric motor. So you, do you pedal it to get it going? Yep. And, yep. Then, and then you just take your foot off the pedal and You don't rolls. even have to. You can still, depends on the bicycle. The ones with the throttle, you can just use the throttle. The ones that are pedal assist, you have to pedal in order to have the assistance work for you. But the assist levels can be such that if you have a steep hill like coming up, you know, going up Mill Mountain. You can go up Mill Mountain in it. Yeah, and just like, it's really easy. And it do makes it- you plug it, it in? Yep, it's a plug in just like a cell phone. You know, it's a standard wall charger. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, it's really, now, really I mean, you could ride to Charlottesville with yeah, that. Yeah, they're I mean, amazing. You, that's that's wild. Yep. So do you rent bikes? We, uh, well, it depends. That's a sort of an interesting question. I mean, in theory we do right now because of COVID, we're not. Um, when, the, when the regulations change in terms of group sizes and events, we'll probably resume our rentals. And so we have a fleet of e-bikes that we do for rentals around here. Gotcha. And so you, you work on the bikes, you have tons of different bikes. You've got three different spots in one location. You've, I'm on the roof right yeah. here. I feel like sun tanning up here. <laughs> I mean, I love I love getting sun. My wife yeah. thinks I'm, I'm crazy. <laughs> um, and I've got a little bit of Cherokee and Indian in me. Maybe it's the coffee making me talk. Um, and then you've got your bike shop, and then you've got the pit yep. where you work on the bikes. Yep. Um, so let's let's talk about that. I'm drinking delicious coffee right here, um, and you have beer. Yeah. So t- let's talk about both. Let's yeah. start with the coffee. Where do you get yeah. that from? So Roasters Next Door is a local roastery down in Wasina. So Stefan and his crew roast their coffee for us. They're amazing to work with. So they source you know organic coffee, free trade coffee. Oh, wow. Um, they do a custom blend for us, um, and uh, fantastic locally roasted coffee that's available hot. And then we also have a nitro that they make for us. So we have a nitro cold brew as well. Oh, my gosh. Um, I didn't know. That. Yeah. I, w- I would have probably gotten a gallon yep. of that. Um, yeah, so really, really good coffee. You know, we have full espresso bar, lattes, cappuccinos, all that stuff too. Are you? Um, do you like coffee a lot? I do. Yeah, I drink coffee every day, at least twice a day. Yeah, same here. <laughs> like I'll drink it around three thirty. Yep. Uh, we we've got a French press. Yeah. 
and then I'll sometimes that will be that that will be leftover, and I'll add that to like a shot of espresso or yeah. something. Yep. All right, and then you you have beer too. Yeah. Tell us about your brews. Yeah, so we have six regional craft beers on draft um, at all times, and those vary depending on the season. So typically, we tend not to have repeats as many to, unless we have a real popular one. We'll get new stuff in all the time, and we we sell in six barrels, so the the kegs are small, and so the turnover is pretty fast. And oh, so, so you sell a keg out of here? Well, it's not the keg that we sell, but the keg of beer that they're in is a smaller volume and so the beer cycles through really okay, quickly. Gotcha. And so if you were to come in on Monday there's a good chance that by the next Monday it'd be a different beer. You know, there'd be new stuff. Okay. So if you're interested in trying new beers, we've got a lot of different stuff on. Yeah, so as, as I, I'm looking at the bike shop when I dr have driven by here in the past, what do you all do? do? Do people go out for like large rides together? Like what's a large ride? Is it 20 people and then they come back? Hey man, let's have a yeah. couple beers. Yeah. So back again, pre COVID, we would have group rides that would leave from here and we would do Monday night shop ride. That would be 13 miles. Um, we'd come back. Where do we, you go? What's we do like, um, it's essentially the Greenway, but we go like down Campbell to Norwich, down into uh, Bridge Street, get on the Greenway, do the full Greenway into like Wise Avenue. And then Wise to Campbell, and then back. So it's Wise over there near Vinton, where mm -hmm. it goes over the bridge. Yep, exactly. I love that bridge. Yeah, right there. it's a super nice ride, and it's beginner friendly. It's no drops, which means like any any speed level, any fitness level is welcome. You won't get left behind. We always always have somebody behind to make sure everybody gets back. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, we have taco specials afterwards because we have our kitchen. Um, oh, you have tacos? Yeah, we do food. We, I mean, it's the real deal here. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so I love tacos. Um, we tacos are on Monday nights after the rides. But yeah, we we've typically had between you know, 15 and 40 people on these rides. I mean, they get big in the summer and springtime when it's nice out, you know? What time's a ride um, start? Ride starts at six on Mondays. They won't happen again until after June 10th, but, uh, and that depends on the regulations right now. We're limited to 10 people, so we're just, we're canceling them for right now. But, um, and then Saturdays during the summer, we'll have rides in the mornings. And so the rides on Saturdays will be more intermediate advanced road bike rides. Um, and so they, the routes for those will change. The ride leaders for those will change. Um, That's so cool. Yeah. How far is how far does Saturday's ride go? Between probably twenty and fifty, you know, just depending on the route. Um, with some with light elevation, some with major elevation. So you know, you can get rides that are really aggressive, and some that are just a little bit more casual. And so, do you have people come in here every morning and get coffee? Mm -hmm. Like they just sit here and yeah. chill? Yeah, and... yeah. Things have changed since the regulations have been in place with restaurants. We just opened up the rooftop for phase one. Um, you know, so now people can hang out. Uh, which is good because it is kind of a, ni a nice place to just chill. Um, but yeah, you know, pre pre regulations, we would have people come in for breakfast, come in for coffee, sit at the bar, you know, stop in on their way to work or on their way home, grab a growler, beard, and go home. You know, six so, pack to go kind of a thing. Yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah. um, if people want to find out more about downshift, if yeah. if, you, if if they want you to come to their house, yeah. and pick up their bike, how do they yeah. find out more? There's info? two ways to do that. So the easiest way is to go on to um, downshiftbikes.com. And then under the service tab of the website, there's a booked book appointment and you can pay for uh, one of our three levels of tune up. There's the basic, the annual and the overhaul um, that will allow you to choose a time. And then that time is when we'll come and grab the bike. Gotcha. That's the easiest way. The other way, if you're a little bit more Gen uh, Gen X or Millennial, um, you can go on to Instagram and Facebook and actually message us that way and do a create appointment, and then you can actually book through the Facebook and Instagram messaging as well. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. All right, perfect. Steve Ambrose yep. with Downshift Bikes here on the Run It Real Estate Podcast. Man, this has been awesome today. Is yeah. there anything else you want to let people know? Um. Not really. I mean, it's great. We'd love to see more people getting into riding and stuff. You know, now the greenways are open and now that kind of the, the rules around, you know, being outside and active are a little bit more relaxed. Yeah. Get out there and enjoy the sun. All right. Perfect, man. I appreciate yeah. you being on the show. Absolutely. Today. Thanks, Fraser. Yeah. What an awesome interview from the rooftop of downshift handcrafted bikes and brews and coffee downtown Roanoke, 416 Campbell Avenue. Make sure you go see Steve and say hi to him. They've got awesome food too, and they do, they take great care of their customers. Um, like he said, they come and pick up your bike from your house, and he just loves Roanoke and moved here from Alaska. I think everybody should move to Roanoke. Hey, um, thanks again for listening to the Roanoke Real Estate Podcast today, and you know, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, uh, talk about your business, uh, your cause, feel free to reach out to me, the Fraser Hughes Experience Realtor on Facebook, Hughes or Lose on Instagram. And um, I even got on TikTok here recently to, to show off some of my crazy moves. 
Um, and I hope that you just have an awesome day today. Um, no matter what you're going through, just remember um, to stay positive and push ahead. And if you're having a hard time, things are temporary. The housing market is hot here in Southwestern Virginia, and I'm gonna help you when it comes to selling and finding your next home. Reach out to me. And um, I really thank you for all the referrals and telling a friend, it, it means so much. Until next time, do me a favor, stay positive, and remember, the experience is real. Want to be on the Roanoke Real Estate Podcast? Call Frazier now or text 540-314-5583. Also contact Frazier to sell or find your next home. And he is always fresh on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Stay positive, Star City and Hughes. It don't lose it.